Dr. Orzak, thank you very much for your patience and being here today uh, and for the hard work you put into putting the budget together. And we're going to take uh, obviously quite a bit of time in scrutinizing it and, and working with the administration to try to get this right. Um, we're obviously deeply concerned about where the economy is at this point. We, we've <clears throat> obviously come a long way from where we were. Uh, one year ago, we were losing over 700,000 jobs, as we've talked about, per month, and the economy shrank by about 5.4%. And uh, we have seen a, a slow turnaround uh, because last month we saw job losses at one-tenth the rate from a year ago and economic growth at 5.7% uh, uh, is my understanding. And obviously this is remarkable progress, but right now, quite frankly, my constituents can't find jobs. In, in Rhode Island, we have the third highest unemployment rate in the country at 12.9%. Uh, so can you, once again, uh, both for, for my own knowledge and, and for my constituents back home, Please specifically, more, more specifically, outline the proposals geared toward job creation uh, and how are these programs projected to decrease unemployment and over what period of, uh, of time. Uh, and if you could, uh, after that part of it, talk about specifically the, uh, the funds that would be going in the job creation portion of it to, uh, to the states, more specifically to local cities and towns. One of the criticisms that we had in the, the stimulus money that it went to states and it didn't filter down the way we had hoped to take care of the local communities. So if you can talk specifically to uh, money that might be going, for example, to CDBG, uh, which is something that our, our local mayors and town administrators have been, have been clamoring, clamoring for because it's, uh, those are shovel-ready projects on CDBG. But if we could talk of the first part. Uh, sure. Uh, with regard to the first part, uh, we have put forward a $100 billion uh, jobs package. Uh, some of the details are still to be worked out working with uh, the House and Senate. We have identified, for example, a $33 billion jobs and wages tax credit, which would provide up to a $5,000 tax credit for hiring more people or expanding uh, wages at a firm. And that will help to promote job growth because um, some small businesses are right on the edge of uh, either hiring someone or providing a wage increase. and in return for this tax credit, they go ahead and do that. So that is the uh, one of the key things. Now, with regard to uh, state and local fiscal relief, as you know, the Recovery Act included uh, at the state level important relief delivered through the Medicaid program. This budget proposes continuing that so-called FMAP for an additional six months uh, beyond the, the current level. And then you asked about CDBG. I'll get the exact figure, but I believe we're funding it at $4 billion uh, in uh, $4.4 billion in uh, 2011. And we also have, uh, if I remember correctly, a hundred or $150 million catalytic grant program to try to create more innovation within that part of the budget. Okay, that's helpful. Thanks. And I, so the, the, the money that would go toward uh, tax credits and other incentives to small businesses, that's included within that one hundred. Correctly. Billion dollar. Well, within the hundred billion, yes. Okay. Uh, so, if I could, turning to um, uh, the other part of it, our challenge, uh, not only creating jobs, which is very important in the both short and long run, but also as we've talked about, as equally important, deficit reduction. Can you talk about uh, your projection in terms of how much uh, these job creation, small business investments, translate into overall? Uh, deficit reduction as a percentage of GDP once the jobs are created, obviously jobs are right. created, we're paying taxes. So in, is this economic growth enough to reduce our uh, deficits to sustainable levels? Uh, one way of answering that question is that when you generate an additional dollar of economic activity, you typically reduce the deficit by uh, somewhere between 25 and 33 cents on the dollar. So uh, if a dollar of uh, additional job creation uh, activity from the federal government creates a dollar of additional economic activity, something like a quarter to a third of it would be offset through uh, additional revenue in particular as the economy picked up. The key thing though is, let me just again emphasize, unless this economic recovery continues and unless we spur it on, we will never get our out year deficits down. I, I mentioned we're at 10 percent now. We need to get to a much lower number. The big reduction comes as we move from 10% of the economy to 5% of the economy by 2015 because of economic 
uh, recovery because of economic activity picking up. Abnormally low uh, revenue as a share of GDP, which is currently the case, will increase as economic activity picks up. And certain uh, cyclically sensitive spending categories like unemployment insurance, food stamps, and what have you naturally decline as the economy picks up. Both of which, by the way, the fact that that's happening, revenues down, unemployment insurance, food stamps up, that's beneficial to help mitigate the economic downturn now. But as the recovery takes hold, that naturally those automatic stabilizers, stabilizers naturally fade and the deficit declines. And that's crucially important to getting this deficit down over time. Well, I see my time has expired. I just want to say that uh, I applaud the, um, the President and look forward to working with you to focus on creating jobs, 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 uh, okay. like, a, like a laser beam. We have to have that focus. There are too many people that are out of work. Uh, we get it here in the, in the Congress. I know the President gets it, and, and this is going to be a, uh, a strong partnership to make sure that we get this right. So, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Orzak, thank you for your presentation and answers.